PlayStation has found itself in a very interesting predicament. A few months ago, we were talking about how their leaked documents mentioned them predicting their own particular status in the gaming scene and seeing that they were already leapfrogged over by Xbox. This is a reality that a lot of people may try to deny, but that's one thing about a reality appeal. It is not in any way concerned about the feelings that we're seeing all over this internet discourse. A lot of people are coming at this from an emotional perspective. They've taken a lot of pride in a platform they play on, and in some cases, many of them have actually you know, been very vitriolic to Xbox and Xbox community members. So now that the egg is on their face, there's no way many of them can admit the shame of their terrible ways. But in this video, I want to go ahead and do something that I probably haven't done in a while, which is to actually point out ways that PlayStation can actually move forward from this knockdown that it's on. Because yes, this is the reality peel. They literally have been pummeled. They stayed and sat there and were very aggressive against a very innovative competitor who could eat losses and sit just to position themselves for years. They were, in a way, trying to erase them from the market, not knowing that they were going to incur the weight of a parent company that is pretty much many times bigger than their parent company to come in. With all of the innovation and positioning, Microsoft pretty much put Xbox in a place where Xbox is now this juggernaut of a brand. However, PlayStation can actually make a very good comeback, even with all of what it is that they've actually set in motion, including their live services. So in today's video, I've put, put together three steps or three actions that they can take in order for them to be able to get a little bit of a relief for now before they can actually try to recover or gain ground in this area. Number one, PlayStation needs to return to supporting the PlayStation 4. It needs to do it quietly. It is a company that likes to play optics. It's not going to want to go back and try to say, oh, you know, we first said we weren't going to be supporting the PlayStation 4, but now we're going back to it. There's also a statistical reason as to why they need to go back to the PlayStation 4, simply because a lot of PlayStation players are on there, number one. Number two, the biggest selling game on PlayStation, Call of Duty, is on there. Number three, other developers that are looking for extra places to sell their games are on there. Like EA's, uh, I said EA's, I almost said EA's Bioware. I meant to say EA's Respawn, who took their game, Jedi Survivor, and were able to port it to the Unreal Engine 4. PlayStation's proprietary software works very well with the PS4. In fact, the PS4 was capable of rendering a game like The Order. I mean, if it could render that game, I don't see how any of these other PlayStation games cannot benefit from it. Another thing, too, is many might say, well, but the PlayStation 4 is, is holding back the, you know, the new generation of games. To that, I want to say, kindly please shut up? There's no such thing as next gen. The tools used to make video games are basically the same. Blender, your game engine, maybe a little bit of extra tools from outside externally, and you can crank out a game with some you know, good vodka and probably a little bit of magic. And what I mean by that is a lot of experience, some code, and so on and so forth. This is how some of the best games were made. They didn't require some of these new tools and all the shinies. Arkham Knight still looks better than many games out here. For most of you that may be talking and saying, well, next gen, next gen, next gen, please, I ask that you kindly just shut up with that stuff, okay? Let's just quit that. Let's talk about reality. Let's stay with the program at this moment so that we can see where PlayStation can actually make, I think, waves, significant waves in returning exactly to where it needs to be. Now, the second part that I think will probably help PlayStation is to make small games. When I say small games, you're talking about anthology, uh, anthologies or, you know, small scale games that are based in specific universes that can actually be done very quickly, that can be launched very quickly and can leverage the PlayStation 4 platform as well as a PS5 platform. This is the reason this game should be in quotes small. They don't necessarily have to be, you know, side scrollers or top down isometric shooters. They could just be a game like, you know, say the Lost Legacy game in the Uncharted, you know, franchise. They could take pretty much all what they already have, assets, mechanics, gameplay systems, and hash them over and quickly bring these episodes that have a long, you know, a larger player base to be able to sell on. I think this is the way to go. But not only are they going to have to stop there, because if they try to stop there, they're going to shoot themselves in the foot again. They need to launch those smaller games in quote, day one on PC. I know PlayStation style. They like to play optics as if they're the big or the smartest guy in the room. So if they launch these games on PC, 
their audience members are going to still come back and circle and say to me, well, you know, it's not their 10 pole games. It's not God of War per se, nor is it Spider-Man per se. And they can keep that optical illusion going and keep fooling their own fans while they're still making money. I think PlayStation is in a really interesting place. They really have to go around their hardcore fans to actually make money. Like they, they can't, you know, because they've postured and given a certain, you know, sect of their fan base a level of entitlement that the only way that those fans can actually enjoy these games is if they're exclusive, giving them some kind of air as to, oh, yes, these are the kinds of games you play where you can't play them anywhere else. So in order to continue to make them feel this way, they kind of have to do things in a, you know, in a really weird kind of, you know, slow, muddied up way. And what I mean by that is that you take, for instance, like Lego Horizon Adventures, which is a PlayStation published game, a PlayStation's Gorilla developed game uh, in, you know, conjunction with, you know, Studio, Studio Gobo, of which some Gorilla developers were on Twitter excited about making this game. I'm sure the devs are going to be, you know, elated if their games can get to more hands. A game like this is a small game. You see, PlayStation first postured and said only live services were going to be going to PC day one. But somewhere, somehow, they kind of backed away from that. And they didn't tell anybody. They just brought Until Dawn a remake day one. Bam! Even when they had delayed The Last of Us Part 1 remake from coming to PC day one. Right? So you see, they kind of just quickly muddied and people were like, you know, and the PlayStation fans were like, well, you know, it's not really an important game. I mean, it's not like they dropped God of War Ragnarok on here. Ha 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 ha. And then they did a Lego Horizons, which is my most anticipated game. And I said, guys, look, it's a, it's a day one PlayStation game. They said, well, Lego wanted them to do it. I mean, it, the craziest things, like, you know, Lego will bend, you know, will strong arm, you know, PlayStation to put their game on Nintendo Switch. Nintendo, who PlayStation and they used to have, like, you know, this very interesting beef, according to, you know, some of your reports back in the day, right? PlayStation that walked away from the table with Disney is going to let Lego bend their arm. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. However, I'm going to let y'all have it. But they need to bring those little games to PC day one. This is going to give them the sales that they need. These three steps, going back to the PS4, quietly, making small games and putting them on PC day one, I think is going to bring PlayStation to a very interesting position where they get some relief and have a springboard. The craziest thing, too, is this LEGO Horizon game, do you know the audience that this game skipped? It skipped the PlayStation 4 audience, and it's going to the Nintendo Switch, of which the Switch 2 is being proposed to be a platform that is going to be just as powerful as the PlayStation 4. So before those people start yelling that the PlayStation 4 is probably not a good console in a sense, you got to understand that the biggest console seller is about to upgrade to PS4-like hardware. So why is PlayStation not going to take notes from them, instead try to abandon a player base from behind so that it can push new consoles? Now, the question is, is PlayStation going to do this? I doubt it. You see, as they're launching this, their new games and making these live service games, they fail to realize that the, the PS4 is a very, very viable place for them to be able to make money. All of their competitors are on the PS4. Epic Games is on the PS4. Activision is on the PS4. EA is on the PS4. These consoles sold so well, sitting at over 100 and something plus units, of which now even half still remain on the PS4 and seem reluctant to move from there. I mean, what are they playing? They're playing the same games that they mostly play, Call of Duty, FIFA, a few games. I can tell you of a family member who has a PS4, and while he was trying to figure out what he was going to do as a new generation came around, he started inquiring about PC. I was like, okay, if you want to get a PC, here are the things you need to do. I went to my garage, I pulled some PC parts off, you know, I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm weird. And I was like, yeah, take these, kick off a PC build. It won't cost you much. His friends got too excited. Once they saw the computer parts, they were like, he literally has computer parts. They've been trying to talk him into getting a gaming PC. They went and built him a gaming PC as a surprise. He's not going to the PS5 because his friends are not going to let him. They're like, you're going to play Call of Duty with us. You're going to play Zombies with us. All the games we used to play when we were high schoolers, you're going to play them with us. Many PlayStation 4 players have not yet made the decision to move into the PS5 platform yet. Many may bank away, go to PC. Many may stay, get a handheld from the PC side because there's a plethora of them. PlayStation abandoning them is just not a smart move. Ratchet & Clank, Returnal, Spider-Man 2, these games could have been ported to the PS4. They could have made a PS4 version. If Jedi Survivor, Stuttery Survivor, right, could get a PS4 version. If Hogwarts Legacy, even though it's kind of rough, could get a PS4 version. I don't see how the proprietary owner of that hardware who had made games like Uncharted, God of War 2018, and Spider-Man 2018 could not get their games 
to actually get a version on the PS4 platform. Now they need that platform in my mind if they need to speed run their way to recovery. If not, this blow to their eye is going to start to turn, you know, infected. And then more and more, the rot is going to go deeper and deeper. They really have nowhere to go. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the chess game. I'm looking at the live services games. They don't want to bring them to Xbox. They want to leverage just PS5, 61 million PS5 that crash Concord, 61 million PS5 that only that, that only about four, three, four million bought uh, Helldivers 2. 61 million PS5 that bought, what, what do they buy? They keep buying Call of Duty. You're not buying anything. So you need to move to PS4. You already have a player base there. What are you waiting for? They pay for PS Plus, everything else. Get them a version of the game. Developers can port to the Switch. How hard is the PlayStation 4 for experienced devs? These are my thoughts. Are they going to do it? I don't know. Nobody asked me, but I thought, okay, let's go ahead and see some ideas that can bring PlayStation to a position where it can, like I said, remain significant because I do not want Xbox that dominates the market like this. They need a competitor at their heels and one that bites hard. Thanks for watching the video. Peace out.